So when you see seven in the Bible, especially when you look at Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, you're looking at um, a multiple entendre word. It means seven, all right. And God organizes time in sevens, 490 year units, which is 70 times seven, um, which is played on by uh, both Matthew and Luke in their genealogies to show the promise of Genesis of Messiah. The promise. Seven doubles as a word for promise in the Bible, all over throughout the Bible. See? Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because he rested end of time promise of the end of time the promise of the end of your days of bondage seven means ending also the promise of an ending there's gonna be an ending that's gonna fulfill everything and sevening seven is used all throughout the Old Testament in double entendre for promise being fulfilled okay the chapter should have really ended here in verse 4 all right. Now, then he goes into some other detail. Let me get rid of this. No, wait a minute. This is where the chapter two really ought to start. If you look at the other chapters in the Old Testament, they do this also. First, they go through some detail, and then they're going to like you don't get the account of 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 Adam's sons until Genesis, oh, his mouse is driving me nuts. You don't get the account of Adam's sons until Genesis 5. All right, even though you were told about the first son in Genesis 4. So this is what you do. Genesis 2 really begins right here. And it's now going to go into some detail that is a metaphorical explanation of why God did it in the order he did to tell you things about how he restores you. All right? No mist. I mean, no rain. He did it with mist. Now, you know, people, oh, they're so dumb. I gotta stop being angry. When you have something that's been underwater and it comes up out of the water and it's huge when it dries off the water evaporates from it and the wa the air becomes very heavy very humid in this case so humid that it was a mist so you didn't need rain in order for the plants and stuff to come up to grow that ought to be obvious. I'm, I'm not going to. All right, this is the next verse I want to focus on. This is real important. We're going to have to look at the Hebrew here. Genesis 2 7. All right, we'll just leave one of the translations up here. They're, they're pretty much okay, so we're going to go through this really quickly. Okay, this is Yatser. Now, Form, frame, sculpt. Okay, then sculpted. In Hebrew, the word order is reversed. Then sculpted Yahuwah, that's the word for God, Glohim. All right. Which God is it? Probably the sun. Because this is the most common name for the sun in the Old Testament. Yahuwah, Glohim. At, we saw that was the direct particle ahead and direct object ahead. Okay. Ha'adam. This is a plan words. From the earth, the earth man is made. <laughs> Ether. Dust. Mean. Okay, I gotta focus on this. All the Bible verses that have womb in them, well, almost all of them, have this preposition fronting the word for womb, which is generally beten or rekum. The Hebrew preposition mean does not mean um, from. It means beyond, separated from, out from. Okay, so 
here we go, and sculpted the Lord God, direct object ahead, Ha Adam, out of the dust, out from, out from, out from, beyond, beyond, not inside, out from. Okay, so when you see those verses that say, I called you from the womb, or I knew you from the womb, instead of just saying from, say out from, separated from, beyond, in other words, at birth. Now sometimes, some of the published Bibles will have the courage to translate it that way. I've seen the new um, international version admit that in certain passages like Isaiah, uh, well no, they don't do it there, they do it in Luke one fifteen. The Louis Sagan, which is French Bible, has the courage to translate it as birth instead of from the womb, all right, which because it means birth, it means out from the womb, at birth. The minute you leave, your, the fetus leaves the womb, that's when you become, God creates you. And so when you see from the womb, it means out from. And Louis Sagan and the NIV sometimes have the courage to translate that properly. Um, NIV does it right in Galatians also. I think it's Galatians 1.15 when Paul calls himself called from the womb. Called out from the womb is how it ought to be translated. We'll cover that when I get into the womb series, but I just wanted to say that now. This is always, always, always used as a birthing preposition in the Bible. It is a play on words. Okay, men, and then we have ha-adama. You see that? Isn't that clever? At ha-adam. Adam, come on, mouse. That's Adam. That's the guy, highlighted. Mean out from beyond. You're gonna need to know this when we get to Genesis 3:22. Beyond, ha Adama, the earth, dust. Okay. So it's Adam, mean ha Adama, ha Adam mean ha Adama, the earth man from the earth. Out from the earth, out from, not inside, out from, beyond. And God made Adam, this is God, and sculpted, God sculpted, Ha Adam, from dust, out from, out from the earth. The earth man, out from the earth, separated from the earth. That is the pattern of creation. Out from, not from inside. Okay? And then here's pa. pa. Ugh. There. Alright? And he breathed. Nefa. This is Yifa. Right? Yeah, Cal Walp. Sure. See? Begins with a Y. Cal consecutive imperfect. Look at the bottom there. Nefa. Breathe. That's what it is. It's sometimes used for, for anger. It's very cute. So is the word nostrils, as you're going to see in a minute. God breathed. 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 What did God breathe? Ba. Did you figure it out? What did God breathe? into his nostrils. Ba. The, the, the first letter there, just to the left of the cursor, is B. And you'll notice there's a little dot inside it. That's a doggish. That means it's hard. Otherwise, it's pronounced sort of like between a B and a V. Ba. A nef. Nostrils. Into his nose. Now, this isn't too hard to understand. No baby breathes inside a womb. The first exhale of a baby inside a womb. Where? There isn't. When does the baby exhale? At birth. When they unplug the nostrils. The nostrils are plugged so long as the fetus is inside the womb. Not breathing. God breathed into his nostrils. And what happens when a fetus exits the womb? The first thing is they clear its nostrils and it exhales. 
because God breathed the soul into its nostrils. And now it's a human being, only at that point. Okay, and then what did, what did he breathe into the nostrils? Nashima. Okay, now, Nashima means breath. So he breathed breath into the nostrils. That's why the first thing a baby does is exhale. And there you go. Chayim, plural. All right? Life, plural, plural. See? See at the bottom? Hey, common masculine plural. Let me show you. Okay, I've changed the screen because we're going to get have to get pretty technical at this point. Um, Chayim, which is highlighted there. Let me see if I can adjust this a little better for you. Okay, that's not... There we go. Chayim is plural for life. In the left-hand side of the screen, you're seeing what I did is a search on Chayim. There are 83 verses that show up. I'm not going to go through all of them. But Chayim is both a plural and an idiom. One of the problems that gives rise to a lot of um, confusion in Christianity, and it's kind of understandable, is when do you look at this word in the idiom and when you look at it literally <coughs> and you have to look at it literally because otherwise the whole nature of the spiritual life can't be understood but it isn't always literal in meaning it's wordplay basically the idea of aliveness is what Chaim means but it's it's literal is plural lives Okay, now we're still looking at Genesis 2-7, and the question in this verse um, is whether we're looking at a literal lives, plural, or whether it's the idiomatic meaning of aliveness, or as we would call it in English, living. Living, livingness, okay. Nouns are used as adjectives in most languages, including Hebrew. Here we have... Nefeshet, no, no, sorry, Neshemet, one day I'll start, I'll be able to pronounce this correctly, okay, Neshemat, rather, Neshemat, the little double dots over what looks like a W there, that's a sheen, that means you hurry up to get to the next syllable, it's called a Shua, sometimes it's silent, but you still hurry up, okay, Chayim is right here, all right, so nish, nishmat chayim. This is soul. Okay, breath, but it really means soul. You you can't separate breathing from soul. It's really important, and you can't separate breathing from soul from life. Now, the point that I made in the last episode was, if you're not breathing, you're not alive. Therefore, no fetus in the womb preview of coming attractions when I do the No Soul Life, No Womb Life series. Here we have, we're approaching it, the same issue from the standpoint of is man evolved and the answer is flat no because God has to breathe, remember? First, he, that's God making your body. <coughs> Excuse me. Adam from dust, that's his body. Okay, this is to sculpt a body. All right, this is what he sculpted from. Wait a minute, mouse is stuck. Dust. Men out from Ha'adama, the earth. The earth man made out of the earth. But that's just the body. Okay, and he breathed, and I always say this word wrong. Yepeh. Yeah, yepeh. Well, yepeh. All right, he breathed. Na, and I say this word wrong all the time too. Na, a, ne, pi. Ba, a, ne, pi. I have trouble with that word. Into his nostrils. 
נשמת חיים. Right? So, חיים. Is it plural? Or is it an idiom for living? They're translating it. Everybody translates it. Living. Watch. See? Everybody's translating it with the word living. Okay, well, there's a little problem there. And all, a lot of these verses that you're seeing here at the left, okay, let me move this window a little bit so you can see how many there are. I mean, they go all the way through the Old Testament. There's a lot about them in the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Jeremiah. All right. And that's kind of the mistake that we run into in theology is when you have a lot of uses of a word when it's an exception to the normal use it's going to get overlooked and that's an understandable mistake but here's why you know it's a mistake here's how you know that chayim means lives plural literally in the first place God is a spirit All right. in the second place you are a soul. In the third place, I'm setting this up, okay. In the third place, you are also a body. Now, it's not really rocket science to figure out that each kind of life has its own nature. And therefore, is separate in its nature as a separate kind of life. Alright? And what makes this provably so is just first of all logic. You always test with logic. Alright? Where is it? Here we go. You always test with logic and if God is a spirit but you are not then you can't have life with God because you've got to have the same kind of life He does your pet dog or cat you love very dearly but they don't really have the same kind of life with you that you have with other humans why because they're not the same type of life they're animal life they don't have souls which they did alright so you have soul life in communication with other humans because they also have souls you have a commonality of biology with your pets but it's not the same kind of life we need to have a commonality with God which is spiritual it's its own type of life that's why Christ says in John 3 you gotta be born again to become a spiritual being so now we're going to answer that question about what Hayim means in 2.7 when Adam was made he was made perfect Hayim is in red there now all right, when Adam was made, he was made perfect. Let me get rid of the red. All right, now we'll cover you up again. Okay, when Adam was made, he was made to have life with God. So he's getting spiritual life, and he's getting soul life. Obviously, he got bio biological life when God made earth man out of the earth. All right, but God doesn't have a body. God is a spirit. That's John 4, 23 and 24. God is a spirit, actually. There's no ah uh, there. God is the spirit. Play on words. And it's a play on words here, too. It's a play on words in that Chaim lives. Okay? So we're looking at here. Into, into his nostrils, the breath of lives, plural, which God breathed. All right? Now, are you really alive if you don't have life with God? Answer, no. To see the play on words there, Chaim is usually translated living or aliveness. So there's a very keen awareness of the both meanings of Chaim, especially since 83 verses, about 75 of them are used that way. But this is plural lives. One life to have life with God was spiritual. One life to have soul life with other humans, soul. And therefore, look in the bottom of the screen in the blue. Okay, that's Bemotai. Okay, B, 
Matai. This ties back to a verse we're going to get to, hopefully, in this episode of uh, Genesis 2.17. Adam had two lives, so Adam has two deaths. This is a verse in the lower corner when the blue is about Christ dying on the cross. He also has two deaths. That word highlighted in blue, the motai, is plural deaths. Oh, you can't see it because the mouse isn't in the right place. Okay, now you can see it. All right, look. See in the lower left-hand corner? I've now highlighted it. Noun, common, masculine, plural, plural, plural deaths because Christ, like the first Adam, the last Adam had spiritual life because he too was perfect at birth. So he had spiritual life with God, duh. How else could he stay perfect? All right? Adam had spiritual life. The last Adam had spiritual life. The first Adam dies twice. The last Adam dies twice. So like my pastor likes to say, the last Adam dies twice, so we only have to die once, physically. Now when we get to Genesis 2.17, that's going to be really important. So try to absorb this now. Okay, I'm going to close the window on Isaiah 53. Oops, what happened to it? There, now it's back. All right. These verses, I'm just going to read them out loud. You'll want to check them in your free time. Genesis 2, 7, 6, 17, 7, 15, 7, 22, Genesis 26, 19. Well, here, why don't I just briefly, I'm going to just briefly show them. Trouble is my mouse goes crazy when I do this. Okay. That's Genesis 6, 17, 7, 15, 7, 26, 19. That way you can study this in your leisure. It doesn't always work to, yeah. Okay. Exodus 4, 18. Oops. See, most of the time you're seeing it in the common idiomatic meaning of, of aliveness. All right. Leviticus 1, 5, 145. Let me see if I can move the window up a little bit. Top most, top most English Bible version is the New American Standard. Because I can search on the words. Okay? So that's Leviticus 14, 5. This word talks about the life of the animals in its blood. Because the soul circulates thought. And the analogy to that in biological life is the heart pumping blood. Leviticus 15.13. Number 16.30. You can't see the English there. Number 16.33. Oh, I hope the mouse is going to work. It usually does not like it when I do long searches. Okay. Numbers 19.17. Deuteronomy 4.4. 4. And there's always wordplay done when the, the aliveness references a human rather than an animal. So pay close attention when you get to the, the verses here that are talking about people. Okay? In other words, you're not alive if you're not living, if you don't have spiritual life. You might as well be dead. Because you're dead to God. Okay, that was Deuteronomy 5.3. Now we're getting into Deuteronomy 5.26. Deuteronomy 12.1 is next. Deuteronomy 31.13. 1 Samuel 17.26. 1 Samuel 17.36. See, this is the kind of work a pastor has to do. If he's going to teach you a doctrine, he's got to look up all the uses of the keyword in the Bible and then figure out which of the uses applies to the verse he's teaching. Okay? Okay, so that was 1 Kings 8.40. Now we're on 1 Kings 20.18. 2 Kings 7.12. 2 Kings 10.14, where it's used twice. 2 Chronicles 6.31. As you can see, most of these are just 
the typical idiomatic meaning. Second Chronicles 25.12. Job plays a lot with the, the two meanings of the concept. Okay, pay close attention to the Job verse here. Job 10.12, think about its wordplay. Um, David plays a lot with the two. Oh, especially David. Forgot about that. Psalm 16:11. Yeah, you see the word play there in 16:11. Think of how, think of lives plural, spiritual life and soul life, and then think of life as living. The common meaning of living. All right, look at that verse and see if you don't tell the, if you can't tell the word play on Chaim. Okay, Psalm 21:5. There we go. It's 21. 25 in the Greek and uh, 21 4 in English. Psalm 27 13. It's considered 26 13 in the BGT in the Greek. Okay. Oh man. See, look at all this wordplay. Psalm 36 34 13 12 in English. Psalm 36, 10, 9 in English. People who put together this software went to a lot of trouble. Um, Psalm 38, 20, 19 in English. I mean, there's really a lot of them. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. To f it's already at 16 minutes. Psalm um, 52, 7. 5516 I'm going to have to go faster because this thing is slowing down because it doesn't like the recording going beyond 10 minutes. Okay, Psalm 1243. I already did 6929. Psalm 1333. Proverbs 12. Oh, Proverbs does a lot of play play on the dual meaning of Chaim also. Proverbs 319, 3-2, 3-18, because I'm figuring you're going to stop the screen to, to play with this. Okay, 322, 410, 422. Oh, I don't know if it's going to make it. I may have to stop at 422. It's beginning to kick out on me, and I'm almost at the end, too. Okay, I've already clicked it for 423. I finally worked. Okay, Proverbs, we're now in Proverbs 5 6, 623, 835, 911, 1011. 11:30, 12:28. Yeah, he plays a lot with a lot with the dual meaning in Proverbs. Okay, 13:12. Oh, wow, 13:14. Yeah, especially look at that. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Yeah, spiritual life, double life. Okay, Proverbs 14:27 is that one. Now we're going to 15.4. Yeah, wholesome time is a tree of spiritual life of lives. Okay. Proverbs 15.24. So Proverbs, Psalms, and Job play with the dual meaning a lot. Proverbs 15.31. I tell you, nobody's like God for wit. Proverbs 16.15. Proverbs 16, <laughs> Proverbs 16.22, you see the duality there? Proverbs 21.21. Cause see, we weren't designed to live apart from God. It, uh, Ecclesiastes 4.2. Ecclesiastes 9.9, but it's having trouble. Because it doesn't like being at the bottom of the screen. Oh golly, there's so many. Now Ecclesiastes ten nineteen, Song of Solomon four fifteen, 
and our famous Isaiah 53 8 now that's really important this is wordplay okay Chaim means the lives it, it's a moniker for Christ Kinigzar Med is Chaim okay they say cut off from the land of the living no Isaiah is calling him the lives alright think it over gotta keep moving Jeremiah 2.13 yeah, that's really interesting. The fa see, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. See, God's making a dual play on Chaim there. Um, Chaim also has to do with uh, flowing water. In, in the secular sense, it's translated that way in the Bible. Okay, Jeremiah 10.10. 10. The living, the God of lives. The living God. Okay. Jeremiah eleven nineteen. All right. Now let us cut here. This is this is um, this is this is also karat. That's interesting wordplay. Karat means to cut a covenant. It's used for the bris. All right. Let him cut a, cut him off away from the land. Meeretz, birth. You know, away from. Remember, this is the preposition men as a prefix. We saw men, and we spent a lot of time with it, and I can't get the mouse to, to highlight it. The M there. This is the M right here. M with the olive. The, the first letter is the men preposition. Chaim. From lives. Dual entendre. Jeremiah 17.13. Okay. There's another duality. Rich. Fountain of living water. See, God likens himself to a fountain of living water. Jeremiah 23, 36. Ezekiel 26, 20. Ezekiel 23, 23. 32, 23, sorry. Ezekiel 32, 25. Oh, the mouse is going nuts. And Ezekiel thirty-two twenty-six, thirty-two twenty-seven, thirty-two thirty-two, and maybe the last one is in Zechariah fourteen eight. See, did you see how many living waters things there are in the prophecies? Look at this. That's been a constant. That's been a constant theme. That's likening it to God, a picture of God, flowing water, living water, plural, the sense of plurality, plural lives. Okay. So you see, the point was that back here in Genesis two seven. All right. You got. Nishmat. Chaim, lives plural, to have life with God and to have life with other, other beings, and only then are you truly alive, and only then, after into your nostrils, these lives are breathed. That is when you become, okay. Let me let me fix this. That is when you become. Adam became. Okay, and into existence, Adam. Now here's this is really important. The la here, just to the left of the cursor is the L. Lenefesh. He became a soul in his soul. So and became the Hebrew word order is different. Adam in his soul alive living. Here it's plural where it's in yellow and here where it's in blue it's an adjective meaning living, alive. In his soul he's alive. Okay? So that does it for that part of it.